The Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 has raised the alarm over an unhealthy practice of some Nigerians who pick face masks from rubbish dumps and sell them. Chairman of the Task Force and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Box Mustafa, who raised the alarm at the PTF press briefing in Abuja, warned that such a practice would worsen the spread of COVID-19 in a country. He also said not in state governments which had been evacuating the Quranic school pupils, popularly known as Almajiris, to their states of origin should suspend it. The Minister of Health, Dr. Sage Hanire, also at a press briefing, said pathologists from Sokoto, Bochi, Jigawa, Katsina and Kanu had been trained, adding that they were investigating deaths in the states. Joining us live via Skype is Dr. Susan Adai, a public health practitioner. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the news. More. So, looking at the figures released daily, the latest is 146. An average Nigerian is perpetually concerned about why the figures keep increasing despite the assurances and the work that we see the Nigerian government is doing. What would you have to say to that concern? Um, concerning the increase in number, it's something that cannot be avoided at this particular time, cons considering community spread. We are at the phase of community spread right now, and it means the disease has gone into the community, affecting people. Some are not even falling sick and coming to the hospital. So it's not surprising that despite the lockdown and the effort, the numbers are increasing. But we are hoping that it, with time, the curve will flatten as less people get infected. If we are able to have an effective lockdown system. The lockdown system we have is not really working. All right, the, the PTF is worried about the misuse of face masks as well as its reuse. Help us understand the danger of reusing and sharing face masks. Um, the use of ideally face masks is designed to be used and discarded. That is how it's designed to be used. But we cannot overemphasize the fact that it's a scarce commodity right now. So many people can't even have access to it. Even the frontline health workers don't even have access to adequate face masks. And that's what brought the idea of reusing. Even though it's not the best option, but we are stuck with it that some have to reuse the face masks because of its limited availability. It won't give equal protection as at new, but I guess we have to manage what we have. But as much as possible, face masks should not be reused. That's the ideal thing. But we don't have an ideal circumstance right now. We don't have an ideal situation right now. So we make do with what we have and trust that we don't end up get reinfecting ourselves in the use of reuse of face masks. Is that the Ideally, only challenge with reusing face masks, the possibility of reinfecting or infecting ourselves with it, yes. the virus? Yes, issue. We, we could infect ourselves if we reuse it. Ideally, but if after touching the face masks, you are, you've contaminated it, it should be discarded, especially the surgical masks and another one used. But where it's not available, you're not doing that. So the risk is that if this virus has settled on the face mask, the process of removing it and trying to reuse it, we could end up infecting ourselves or contaminating other surfaces around, All especially right. for frontline health workers who are already exposed, who might be exposed to the virus. Okay, I, I'm, I know you are aware of the Madagascar magic cure, some are uh, tagging it, but is it truly a magic uh, herbal cure, especially with the uh, Nigerian government uh, confirming that it, they've authorized uh, um, some pharmaceutical um, inspection for the products that will arrive in Nigeria? Should we be taking this part? I mean, exploring herbal alternatives, particularly this Madagascar herbal tonic. I guess the news of the Madagascar remedy has been interesting to Nigerians and Africans and the world at large. But as much as we want to go into attempting to use it, we should follow due process. If we're going to get this remedy from Madagascar, it has to be tested for efficacy. It has to be tested for, for safety. It has to go through the protocol before we can attempt to encourage our people to take it. We are not saying it's... Um, 
is not good, is bad, no. But if it comes, let it go through the proper procedure. We have NAVDAC. Can it go through testing? Can it go through um, testing for safety? Especially, safety especially. Because some of the challenges we have with our mixtures is that we can't quantify the dose of the active ingredients that are inside. And so we can actually cause more harm to someone's organ if they take it apart in the bid to solve a particular problem. So if we're going to get it, mm, exciting. But then we should allow it go through due process of testing for efficacy, testing for safety before we administer it to people. And well, I'm, I'm thinking if it's a herbal remedy in an African country, maybe it could be duplicated in other African countries because we have similar three similar sources of herbal mixtures. But then we need to be very careful. We need to understand that this virus and this disease is new. And so much studies have not been done to understand it. So making categorical statements or doing something categorically, we need to be very careful about that. Because the disease is still undergoing study. We're still trying to understand it. So it could take a new turn that may not be so helpful. So we should be careful in towing that path. But I wouldn't say we shouldn't. I mean, we don't have any other solution right now. OK, let, let's um, explore some of the issues around these uh, recoveries that we are seeing. A whole lot of people um, are recovering. Every day we hear state governments announcing people that are being discharged because they've now tested a negative. Um, make it clear how this is possible without vaccines, especially for those who say that, yeah, it's not a death sentence. Why all the brouhaha? OK, so we need to understand something that viral infections are self-limiting, meaning that viral infections are not necessarily death centers. When you get a viral infection, it's likely to go through its course from infection to incubation period to clinical presentation to recovery where your body is able to take care of the virus by itself. The challenge is if the person is able to stay alive during the clinical presentation, is able to handle the difficulties of the clinical presentation and its complication to get to the recovery phase. So it is possible to have a viral infection and not take any treatment per se, except symptomatic treatment, and still recover. So that's what we need to understand. People have asked questions like, those that are being discharged, we should be told what they were given so that we will duplicate that. That's not the point. Viral infections are managed symptomatically. So if the person has cough, we treat the cough. The person is having respiratory distress, difficulty in breathing. We put the person, give the person oxygen, we place the person on mechanical ventilation if need be. Treat the complications you can see and wait for the body to, the virus to run its course and the body, body to take care of it. So there's no particular treatment you're going to say, okay, this is what I used to treat this person that, that cured the person. That's an understanding we need to get. It, we go through its course. And the body will either take care of it or the person will not be able to survive the complications that are associated with it. So people being discharged is not surprising. In fact, I can tell you that there are a lot of people who are, have the disease who did not have a severe form of the infection, maybe a mild cause or asymptomatic, that will become cured without even realizing they have the disease. So you see, that's how viral illness is run. So we need to have that understanding, not to assume there's one special thing that is being given to these people, or maybe we're faking the discharge. No, viral illnesses run their course. And if you have a symptomatic form, or you have mild disease or moderate disease, even severe disease, if the complications are managed and the system, the body system takes care of the virus while it runs its course, the person can be discharged and be fine. Considering the peculiarities of the Nigerian citizenry, what strategy do you think Nigeria can adopt as it stands to make its efforts to curtail community transmission uh, productive? Well, uh, I think that's one of the difficult things we are facing now. Community transmission is ongoing and is massive. That is the truth. Some states are even coming up ab initio with community transmission. But the lockdown system we are operating has not worked, that's the truth, because it has not been too effective and because we have, let, we have made some compromises that has not helped it. So I suggest for now, maybe we don't have a total lockdown because it's not sustainable in an economy like Nigeria. Some people don't even have a house to go and lock down in. 
that is the truth. So maybe we'll have some form of partial lockdown where some only necessary people have to go out to work. If you are not, if there's no necessity, uh, then you can stay back home. Some offices can run a shift system where some staff come to work in a particular week and other staffs come to work in a particular week so that everybody gets involved but not together as one. Maybe that kind of partial lockdown is what we, what we need. And we, that alone does not solve the problem. That's the truth. If we're working on lockdown, then we also need to work on massive testing. We test people, isolate them. Some may need to be isolated in isolation center if they have symptoms. We may need to have isolation centers that are not hospitals per se, maybe a hotel, a guest house, where asymptomatic people can stay so that they don't go back and infect their families and others in the community. All if right, we have such system, it. then it will help. Then we need to also add that we need to do social distancing. This cannot be overemphasized. We need to use the face mask. We need to maintain cough and hand hygiene. These things work together. We can't separate one for the other and expect to have a solution. All right, Dr. Demo Suzanne Adai, thank you very much for your contribution to the news this morning. Thank you very much.